Hello Blues. Just wanted to take a few minutes to talk about Colin Bell. I'm trying to remember him as a, a true city legend in, in literally every sense of the word. Um, I've tried to put a video together uh, this morning just to commemorate him and his, in his, um, his time with City. Not just from a fan's perspective, of which I would have loved to have seen him play, but obviously too young, but through my dad's memory, my uncle's memory, and a few other fans who had the, had the, um, the opportunity to watch Colin play. Um, but not just that, I've got the perspective of somebody who Colin coached in Jim Whitley. Um, and he's got some fanta Jim's got some fantastic things to say about Colin, and, it, and it's well worth the listen. Just to give you um, an upshot of, of Colin Bell and a few statistics from him, he made 501 appearances for City during 13 years with the club, scoring 153 goals. He was an England player, capped 48 times. Um, and he, he, he goes on to be one of City's greatest ever players. One of the greatest ever players that, speaking to fans young and old, appreciate as somebody who would have transformed modern day football if he was alive today and playing today. He made up the one of the three members of the Holy Trinity, which was Lee, Summerby, and obviously Bell. With his passing, he leaves behind a wife, Marie, children's John and Dawn and grandchildren Luke, Mark, Isla and Jack and is easily widely regarded as one of the best City players of his generation. Like I say, I put this video together to try and put some thoughts from not just the fans perspective but from people that have worked alongside Colin and I hope I've done it justice. Rest in peace Colin. Colin Bell. Um... I, do you know what? I'm not sure where to start with him because we can talk about his football prowess and everything he did on the pitch. But for me, it was more than that. Um, when I met him, I didn't know how good he was as a footballer. That came in time as uh, from 15 as I uh, as I progressed through the ranks. And um, I've spoken about this before. Uh, he always used to pull me uh, in training. I used to travel up on a train on a Thursday night from Wrexham to Manchester and we trained together and it was it was apparent then the good players at Manchester City and I, I probably wasn't one of them at the time and it's easy as a coach uh, or a teacher or whatever it is to gravitate towards the the better players or the, or the, the better pupils because it's just easier but he, he never did that you know he he always had the time to pull me to one side and uh, he'd talk about giving 100% which I've talked to you before about and and how to never ever regret at the end of your time of playing to say that I, I I never I could have made it I could have done this so you always used to say give me give 100 percent and every session that he, he that I, I did with him he'd always have something else to say uh, another another time he'd he'd talk about your touch he says it happens in games your touch will go he says you won't be able to pass it 10 yards he said but you have to roll your sleeves up and you have to work hard uh, and and give it to someone else who is playing well and uh, he'd speak about the times when he used to be in the first team and how he'd have a spot in this pub he'd have a chair there that he'd go and have a sit and have a drink uh, and but that would be it and he'd be back in again and, and, and training again on, on Monday there were so many things I can talk about that he used to pull me about which he didn't he didn't have to and it's that for me that sticks out more than anything that he, he'd pull me to one side and just have a quiet word and he was there all the way through from when I made my debut to I think when times went bad, he'd, he'd always be there and he'd, you'd always see his face, be a little wink. And it was like, a, it was like someone who, who watched over me constantly through my, through my career. And, and, it, and it, it's something that stands out massively. You see, every, everyone I've spoken to uh, has nothing but, but superlatives to say about his football in prowess. But what, what you're talking about here is, is, is his personality as a, as a coach and a, almost a father figure type person yeah. where he wouldn't, he wouldn't sort of uh, throw you against the coals, he would put arm around the shoulder and put you on the right path. Did, did he, did he, was he just like that in life in general? Yeah, he seemed to be a very nice man. He never swore. You know, you know the typical footballer today, you know, 
the swearing's kind of part and parcel of it, especially when I was going, coming through the game. But everything was ruddy this or ruddy that. He never swore. He was just a he was just a gentleman. And to look back and and, and look at what he did in his career, uh, and almost going against the grain of what every other footballer does is quite incredible, really. Um, and yes, he was such a lovely man. But not just that. When we were training, he'd do things. Volleys, balls were pinpoint to your to wherever he wanted it. Chest it, he did it to your chest. He did it to your head. He did it to your foot. He, it, everything he did, volleys. He he was so not not only was he his good coach, his craft. Didn't he was craft. He was a fantastic footballer. And it's only now when you look back and I'm coaching kids, you go, he was he was incredible of the things he did. And do you know what that 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 the, the thing he told me about pulling your sleeves up and give, giving hundred percent. It's only after when I finished my Manchester City career that you look back. Fans, fans love you if you if you run for your badge, if you run for your your the colour, the the shirt that you put on, they they love it. And and I understand what he means by that. Roll your sleeves up, run around, go up and down. The fans will appreciate that, and it's uh, it's it's huge. But what a lovely man! I have nothing else to say about him than kind words because he was such a lovely man. Have you been able to take your um, experience of, of working with Colin into the coaching world and into into into, into normality without football in, in life itself? With, without a doubt, the fact that I tell my own kids to give hundred percent, I, I tell them that all the time. Do as best as you can, whether that means you come out with a C or a D in your exams. If you've done as best as you can, that's all anyone can ask for you know I, I try and tell them that when they do their bed do it as best as you can this will the knock on effect from trying to do the best as you can will will, will put you in good stead for any job that, that comes across and so I try and do this and the, and the morning I was really got, I was devastated when I heard but the, the morning I was talking to uh, a lad that I'd taken out and just was telling me exact words of Colin Bell give 100% it will it will help you out and then to see that Colin Bell had, uh, had passed. I was just, I was devastated because yes, he was almost like a silent father figure to me. And uh, whenever I saw him, I almost got a little bit giddy. It was like, oh, there's Colin, uh, you know, because it's I quite rare back. that to have a coach that somebody sometimes, you know, coaches aren't the nicest people in the world either, are they? Because obviously they want to get the most <laughs> best out of you and they don't, they don't necessarily treat you the best to get that out of you. So it's quite refreshing to hear that. <laughs> yes, it is. And, and, and you know, he was looking after the 15s and 16s at the time. So um, maybe back then you can have patience with, with, with kids. Whereas I suppose when you're in the first team, you need results. Sometimes you can't wait for a player to start, you know, getting into fruition. It, you, you need results quite quickly. And, and yes, some coaches aren't very nice, but Colin Bell at the time was fantastic to me. My, uh, my uncle, I've got a quote written down here. My uncle said to me, you have to be some player to get a stand named after you. And I, I forgot, I sit in the Colin Bell stand and that's, I, I've never thought about that in the last 24 hours. And all of a sudden it was like, oh, crikey. Actually, yeah, that's a really, really special player to have that. It's bonkers, really, isn't it, to, to think oh. how, how well he's come and done. Everyone knows yeah. him. Everyone knows him. Everyone knows him. Yes, and uh, and and do you know what? He was such a humble man. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't like the limelight. He he just sit back. And when you talk to him, you wouldn't believe that he, what a player he was. He just he's just a normal guy like me and you talking. And but you 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 know you get some others that that know they've been the best and kind of swagger in. No, he was just unassuming. He did did what he had to do, and he turned up. On the match days and was ever present. You're always there on match days and then um, just yeah, fantastic. You look at there's so many clips that keep coming out now. And uh, there's one that I just watched re just before I came on to you, and it's a volley that came in back stick. And the commentator didn't know what to didn't know what to say. It was like, and it comes to Colin, but oh, oh, he, he was lost. <laughs> the volley came out of nowhere. And the technique and uh, he's he, he was a fantastic player, and more so than that, he was a he was a fantastic mentor for me. He, uh, listen, I wasn't the best of players. Uh, uh, I still managed to break into the team, and I just think that he, the way he spoke to me and the words he, he gave to me managed to get me into the door and managed to get me into the first team because of what he did. I didn't become this fantastic player, but he did enough to get me over the line. It's 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 quite sad to think there's an awful lot of really good quality players that don't necessarily have that these days that, that might be missed out on by just not having that arm around the shoulder and it's uh, 
we, we need a lot from person. I, I, I've, I've met him a number of times. We, we actually shared the same accountant. So I was very lucky to have uh, crossed shoulders with him a couple of times. So I knew what he was like. And it was, I, I, the, in my accountants, um, I, I rented an office from them. Um, and I got a knock on the door. Tom, can I just have a quick word? This is the guy I was paying rent to every month from my, from my office and see the people. I was like, yeah, 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 no problem. What, what's wrong? So just come in there a minute. And in the, in the back room, all, all the paperwork set out is, is Colin Bell sat in the corner. I was just like, you did tell me, you, you did tell me you were with Colin Bell. I was like, yeah, I've known him for years. They're like, you're joking. This is amazing. And he, and he just sat and talked to me about City for half. He didn't need to. He, he absolutely didn't need to whatsoever. He just he just sat and talked about football and City and it was amazing. Absolutely incredible bloke to, to have, have met a number of times, which I'm very happy to. And obviously did the circuit, City, the, the after dinner thing, didn't he? And Yes. Everyone, everyone I've spoken to has got a fantastic. I've seen so many pictures on social media in the last twenty four hours of people hugging and calling, hugging other people. He just wasn't camera shy, and he'd get involved and talk to people about football. It's amazing, really. What a character! Yes, and you. Sadly, the players these days are, are far more guarded. Uh, they're much more high profile, and it's 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 harder to get close to a player to get these kind of pictures now. Whereas back then, you know, the likes of Colin Bell. As, as good a player as he was, still had the time for the fans. Yeah. Uh, listen, it's not it's not just any fans. These are Manchester City fans. And I, I, I got the feeling as well when I played for Manchester City, it was like a big, massive family. And you 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 felt you you felt the need to come and give someone a hug or take a picture of them because it was just that kind of way with the Manchester City fans. And, and Colin Bell would have felt the same. And yes, arm around anyone, have a picture, have the time to take out, to sign autographs. It was part and parcel back then. And it has changed a bit, but... Um, yeah, fantastic player, fantastic man. One thing, you, one one word you, that still jumped to my mind a couple of seconds ago when you mentioned it is technique. Um, I, I I I never stopped thinking of a half time video. You remember, we used to do the half time shows. I've got. And I know exactly what you're talking about. I, I pinged it from the top of the penalty area, bang in in, in his little circles in the goal. Yes. I'm, I'm sorry, how's he done? It does like three I, on the bounce, bang bang, all in. I'm like, that was amazing. Yeah. I got the. I've got a video that I retweeted and it. it there was there were numbers, there were circles That's in the right, goal, yeah. and there were circles, and I think there was five or so, and he had to go from one, which is here, two up here, three, and he did every one, no oh, no rehearsal, just went, and I, I thought, I don't think people realise how difficult that is, and and he just went bang 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 bang, and I thought, wow, right. And he's there, he's having a laugh and a joke about it with the, the camera of the other two players that are with him. like, oh yeah, what's this, this, and that. And he's just, he just did it non so nonchalantly, bang, goal, goal, goal. And and it's, I was talking to, I've talked to a couple of family members about it. Um, my uncle um, recognised, said to say, right, if he was a current day player, would you almost put him in the same bracket as David Silva? He says, not really, it's more of a Kevin De Bruyne. He could play anywhere apart from centre-half, where, whereas he said Colin Bell could play it, literally at centre-half, apart from not in goal and stuff like that. He's just... He just seems like one of those utility players that would thrive so well in the modern day. He, I think out of all the olden players, he he would fit in better than anyone, I think, just because of his work rate and his up and down. It's interesting, I saw a quote, somebody said he wasn't really a forward. He was, he was a forward that went and got the ball deep and drove through and ended up in that. But he had the fitness to come back. And, yeah, yeah. and he, I remember him telling me, the, 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 he was one of the first people who said that the, the, the midfield role was like the engine. It's the engine in, in, a, in a team. And he said, when everything is going well, you never look at the engine. He said, that's just it just ticks over beautifully. He says, the only time you start to have a look at the engine, when you go in the morning for your car, the only time is when things go wrong. And he said, when the engine's ticking, which is what he was, the engine, everything ran perfectly. And it, oh, uh, it was a wonderful analogy. And it's that's something a great I get analogy. Back. I love that. Yeah, it was... It was something that, I, again, I pass on to everyone. But the engine room, the engine room in midfield, just you have to tick it over. And sometimes it's unseen work. It's runs that I go round and run back here, run back here. No one's seen it, but you've had to do it to, to move someone out of the way and come back in. And it, there's a lot of work, and he did it. He's a fit, fit, fit man. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and, you know, I think fitness helped me get into the team and, and running up and down, and it, it helped me massively. But thanks to Colin Bell. Oh, well, you, you've th listen, Jim, thanks as always for coming on, pal. I wanted to get some special memories from you. And uh, I think in, in five, ten minutes there, you've given everyone a fantastic picture of not what he was just like as a player, but actually as a coach, a mentor, father figure. And um, the, the disappointing thing for me is with, with COVID is we're not going to be able to give him the send-off 
that he deserves yes. at a ground, which is really frustrating. But we, we, we're gonna we're gonna have a big party for him when when we're all back in into the ground and, and say thank oh. you for everything, aren't we? No, I hope so. I hope so because he, he deserves it, mate. With a stand named after him, you you have to do something. Boys and girls, Colin Bell. Oh, one in. This is tough. Two in. Three. I told you it was accurate. Boys, that's incredible. He's done it. Obviously, not my generation. Um, was my dad's generation, was my uncle's generation. And, and there's so many, so many fantastic things from people that have said, I, I wanted to get your thoughts on Colin as a player, as a man, and, and obviously when he joined City. And what, what, What's your memories of Colin Bell? Well, Colin Bell, alias Nijinsky, I, I've been watching City since 1956. And Bell is definitely a true legend. I remember him signing for £45,000 from Bury, 65-66 season. And he went on to Elk City win the old second division title. The following year, following season, City's team consisting of all English players won the old first division title, which in beating Newcastle away, 4-3 on the last day of the season, which is a throwback, I suppose, to City's dramatic win over QPR. He played 48 times for England, and for me, he was better than KDB. The pitch is now a far superior, and the goal mouth, the goal mouth at, that, at this time of year would be like a quagmire, and the balls are very different now. The bend were back then it was B L S Bell Lee Summerby and what a formidable combination that was. His career was unfortunately ended at Old Trafford by a tackle by Martin Buckham in a League Cup game, which City won and proceeded to win the competition. The serious knee injury which finally ended his career after attempting several comebacks, ended in 1980, when he finally hung his boots up. For Colin Bell, Nijinsky, King of the Kipak. Rest in peace, Colin. Oh, that's a lovely eulogy, Frank. That's really nice, pal. It's, it's interesting you say there um, about KDB. Is, is he the, was he the, the KDB of your day then? Definitely, yeah. I had a... When I was in work, I had an apprentice with me who, who was actually on the boots at Bury before joining uh, me as an apprentice. And he said, you struggle to do any uh, warming up or anything there because you, all your eyes were on Colin, watching him, what he did, how he, what he did with the ball. He said it was fantastic watching him. What was it about him particularly... Um... That made him the star of the show, or made it made him into the person that you know he, he was loved by City fans all over. I would think he, his stamina was one thing. He always he's, he's played most of the time with his shirt outside his shorts. I think like Summerby did as well. He was another one that did, and uh, his stamina was was unbelievable. And his his control, but for me, I mean, the balls were were totally different then than what they are now on the pitches. You know, you kick the ball now, and it, it, it goes straight away. Yeah, then that, you kick it. It's a good 10 yards, and it's a stick in the slope. They're like snooker tables compared to uh, what they were like then, I suppose. My, 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 just talking to my uncle about um, City, and um, City used to be training down at Withenshire Park and doing the running round and things like that, and it's, it's, it's bonkers, really, to think how... I, I'd lo I would have loved to have, have picked him up and brought him into the modern day football and just see how good he would be because I mean how much do you think he'd be worth these days if, if he was going to start playing with us these days oh over 100,000 I would think definitely 100 million 100 million I was going to yeah. say <laughs> yeah I'm thinking of Sean Gorta <laughs> and where would you I mean is 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 Colin your favourite player then would you say Colin's your, your favourite is he, he must be up there he's, he's well up yeah my, my hero would definitely be Stroutman. 
But uh, Colin is well up there, yeah. Oh. He, he'd walk into any team now. In this day and age, if he was in his prime, he'd walk into any team. Barcelona, Sco Real, Juventus, Paris Saint-Germain, any of them. It's scary to think how much he might be worth if he was in, yeah. the, in the modern day, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, crikey. I mean, 40, 45,000, it was a lot then. But these today, same with Dennis Law. Dennis Law was another one. Hmm. 55,000 we paid from him, from Ali, from Huddersfield. <laughs> how, how long do you think it took um, Colin to be a real household name and one of the best players we've got? How long did it really take him to bust through the, the seams of the team that's there now? Uh, ooh. Not as long as they take these days. It was pretty yeah. quick. I mean, he helped City first season get out of the second division. And the following season, they won the uh, first division. Yeah. I mean, no... You get these players, I mean, they're all majority now are coming from abroad. It takes them 12 months or 18 months to settle in. From the, the Bell era, then, who were the other superstars that, that fit that team really well? Obviously, you've got you mentioned a couple beforehand, didn't you? Who were who your yeah, stars? Bell. Neil Young was another one. Yeah. I think he was very underrated, Neil Young. But on his day, he was unplayable. Uh, Tony Coleman was another one. David Wagstaff, yeah, from that area. Uh, hmm, I'm going back along there now. Uh, Dave Watson, for me, was one of the main stars in the uh, in the defence. First of all, he was a phenomenal athlete. Wow. He was good in the air. He had two good feet. He's got a chance now. He could score goals. And he could run all day. Well. He was a great all-round player. Great all-round. I mean, I'll pick him in my world team. What well, sad news about Mr. Bell? Yeah. I, I, I obviously never, never. Eh? So I Andy was prompting me something that happened between Andy and I and Colin Bell. Many many years ago, but I'll, I'll get. I'll no, go you on, crack on. You tell me. You tell me. Well, it was it was at the City Social Club, the Christmas party for the players, and of course Royal Little invited your dad and I, and Andrew, Andrew was there. Of course, Colin Bell was there. Tony Buck was there. Franny Lee and all the players, and uh, I insisted that we dance next to Colin Bell, and I was telling Ange, I said, "That's Colin Bell. That's Colin." Bell. I, said, I know it's bloody Colin Bell. I'm sick of hearing a bloody Colin Bell, and uh, so I was standing right next to you, like your dad does with the disc jockeys. Yeah. <laughs> to get the prizes, I was like that to Colin, like giving it. Hey, Carl. I like Carl, like you know. And Ange said, "Will you stop bloody wounding over Colin Bell? You're pathetic." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Good days, good days. But uh, oh, oh, it's yeah. it's funny. It's funny this because I want I want to try and in this video try and put across how I mean. Obviously, I never saw him play. I, I, no. I, a couple of generations before me, um, you and Dad saw him, and we, yeah. we don't we don't go to a match. I can't remember going to a match with you and my dad and Bill without at some point during the match or the journey talking about Colin Bell and how good he was. Yeah. He, he yeah. was that influential to like your generation. To was, I, I, yeah. I, I tried to use the analogy of his, he was uh, Dev David Silva in the nicest possible. But I wanted to get your Probably, thoughts on that. I would suggest a David De Bruyne. Kevin. Kevin, Kevin De Bruyne, more like, without doubt. I mean, um, what, what Colin Bell had... The Bruno possibly doesn't have. He could play Colin Bell at centre half. You know, he had everything. He had pace. He was good in the air. He used to leap like a salmon. De Bruno possibly doesn't have that. But on the ball, very, very similar. Very similar. Do you do you remember him signing for City? Yeah, I do. Was for he Berry. as was he as, as as influential for Berry when he came to City? Was it was he hyped up when he came to City? Not really. No, because we were in the second division. And uh, he came, City had no money, I can remember it distinctly. I had no money at the time. And um, they, they wanted to buy him, Alison wanted to buy him from Berry, And Berry wanted £45,000, can you believe this? And City didn't have it. So they waited a couple of months and uh, they were like terrified. 
that somebody else might come in that have got the money. And like I said, oh, eventually they found the money. And I think somebody else might have topped it up for them. And they signed him. And uh, the rest, of course, as you well know, is history. 45,000. Can you imagine that today? 45. I'd love, to, I'd love to try and work that out into modern day money. No, <laughs> oh, well, you're talking. If you call him Bell, you talk. If uh, Neymar goes for 200 million, which is totally inflated, you've got to talk 150 million proper money, not inflated money. The way he was. I mean, you, you don't get a name like him through playing every now and then. He was fantastic. Fantastic. I, um, from, from the research I did, he, he very nearly went to Blackpool instead of City. Things could have been a lot different for us, couldn't it, if, if he would have well, gone there? Funny enough, yeah, I read about that. Andy brought me the evening news, and I didn't know that, to be honest. I, uh, I didn't know that. I just knew he was Berry. And I think what he wanted to do was, obviously, a City in the second division. I would imagine then Berry would probably be in the fourth division. You know, people can correct me if I'm wrong. So anything, and Blackpool will probably be up with us, I would have thought. So possibly Blackpool would have been as, as good a club to sign for as, as us. But then Colin Bell didn't know what the future foretold. Because when he came to us, of course, they won the championship for the second division, go up, and the rest is history. That oh, we won phenomenal. the league, you know, and then the FA Cup, then the League Cup, the Cup Winners Cup, everything, didn't we? The... Um... Because obviously Joe Mercer brought him in, didn't he? And yeah. I've, I've got, I've got, a, I've got a quote here from Joe Mercer. It's the biggest fee I've ever paid, but he'll prove yeah. to be worth every penny of it. Yeah. Because yeah. that, isn't it? The, uh, that, that day and age. Well, and I'm obviously, him... Sorry, go. Who was the? Who was the? Was it not long after Dennis Law came in to City? Because did we start to build a team around? Um... No, Den Dennis Law was at United then. Was it United? So, yeah. Yeah. So Dennis Law came back to us. In 75, 76, and Colin then, um, uh, I think, I don't know, I, know, I remember I, I was at the game when he got had his knee done by Martin Buchan. Uh, it was one of those things where Bell was chasing a ball to the edge of the box, the plat lane end was there, and Buchan came from the kipax towards the main stand, and of course the two met, and uh, Martin Buchan wasn't that type of player. And of course, he never played again proper. Uh, very, very sad, actually, because um, when he came back on, I was there with your dad, he came back on in the second half against Newcastle to a tremendous ovation, but he was dragging his leg and his right. leg was stiff. And we all went, oh, Jesus, like, you know, that's uh, not, not the Colin Bell we remember type of thing, you know. Of course, without the modern day medicines and the doctors and the physios yeah. and stuff yeah. like that, they didn't even have a, even have, I mean, they only really brought in proper physios yeah. 30 odd years ago, didn't they, really? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's I mean, quite it, sad. it must have been the cruciate ligament which they get done now in 12 months and they're back playing as good as, the, as, as they always were. Well, I can remember a daft little story that we used to have a lot of sights, as you know, in Bury. And Colin Bell bought this restaurant called the Bell Waldron in Whitefield. And as I'm driving through Whitefield, going into Berry, see this beautiful E-type jag down the side road where the entrance was for the place. And this chap get out, it was Colin Bell, and his leg was bandaged to oh. fit to burn. I thought, oh, Jesus, it, that doesn't look good. That really doesn't look... How he was driving, and I don't know. Um, you know. How long ago? When was that then? When was that? Was that after, in between his injury and trying to come back? Yeah, it, yeah. And he's, he must have just had the had the uh, injury because he obviously just had the operation because his leg was bandaged up very heavily. Uh, matter of fact, I think he wasn't driving to be honest. He came out of the passenger door. I think about it. So yeah, that was between. Yeah, after he got injured against United, um, a few. Uh, Probably a couple of months after, because he would have operated straight away, I would imagine. Uh, but it didn't look good. Uh, poor oh, lad. Bless him. I, 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 saw, I saw a cracking stat before. Um, Colin was is the highest scoring midfielder in a derby day with his hat-trick in 1972 uh -huh. against yeah. the Reds. Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping Kevin De Bruyne... I'm, I'm not mistaken. I think he played uh, quite a few games for City, over 400. I'm sure he scored about 150 goals. I'll have to get the stats for you. I'm not sure. It's you a know, lot there. But a midfield player, that is exceptional, really, you know. But like I said before, you could play him anywhere, apart from in goals, I would have thought. But he had everything. He could tackle, he could dribble, he could see situation. His pace was phenomenal. 
hence Najinsky. Yeah. It was Malcolm Allison that called him Najinsky. Because after the race horse, of course, you know. Is that where he came from? I didn't know that. Yeah. That's Malcolm Allison, right? Okay. Yeah, uh, because of his fitness. Because in them days, City, Mal when Malcolm Allison came, the Joe Mercer, it was a wonderful blend for the, the, the old gentleman of Mercer with the knowledge and the young, vibrant Allison that wanted to get everybody 110% fit, you know. And I remember them all going to Withinshire Park, lapping around the running track with plastic, Joe Corrigan with a plastic bag on him to get his weight off, like, you know. Uh, so Alison, Alison got them fit and uh, Joe Mercer um, got them playing, you know. Um, what a nice man to play for. But Colin Pell was the, the what is the word, the, the, the heart of the team, if you like. Was, was he the heart of the team as soon as he joined or did it take him a while to kind of... Well, as I said, we're in the second division, so nobody really noticed him. We didn't notice him. It was just a matter of getting into the first division. And, you know, it's like watching a, a player, unless he comes for like £850,000 million, you don't look for him, do you? But mind you, having said that, 45000 of them there was possibly a few quid, like, you know. But uh, I think he just gradually... To be honest, I think he just gradually grew on you. Because he wasn't like... Um, so we said Georgie Kinklansky that had dancing feet, you know, and um, uh, I think a Trevor Francis with blistering pace over 10 yards. Colin Bell just had a bit of everything. He had pace, he had long pace where he could run 50, 60 yards and kill people. He could tackle, he could edit, he could chest it, he could see the through ball. Bit of David Silver in him as well. You know, he could see that like a, my hero, David Silver, could push little balls through gaps, you know. Which Franny Lee used to love, of course. Which Franny Lee was up front, uh, but no, he was just I don't know, it was very special. You should be talking to your dad, really, because your dad's always going on about Colin Bell. Isn't I know. I'm to, the problem is, Chris, I've only got a short amount of time. I'm going to shut him up. That's the only problem. Yeah. That's true. What's your, what's your, what's your, can you remember any particular games where he, he just shined out? One particular game, and you probably know about this, they call it the Ballet on Ice. Wayne Rowan was there. He should never have been played, wouldn't have been played today. Mind you, it, it wouldn't have been like that today. Because also bear in mind, so I'm just di digressing, is that the pitches were rubbish in them days. You know, they were terrible pitches that they were bumpy. You were bouncing, it was full of mud and sand that made the ball stick. You couldn't run with it. So can you imagine what it would have been like today's pitches? As you well know, you know, City's pitch is like a bloody bowling green. It's velvet, isn't it? It's yeah, fantastic. it's amazing. So that, that particular game, that Tottenham couldn't keep the feet, but City and oh, Colin yeah. Bell did. And we beat Tottenham 4-1. And in them days, 4-1 was a good idea, like, you know. And it was called, I've read it in the paper this morning about him. And about the, the Colin Bell game, uh, Bally on Ice. Bally on Ice, yeah. And I better tell you what, there wasn't any long johns or any gloves in sight either, was there? I bet they were freezing. No, freezing the bollocks. <laughs> freezing the bollocks off, I bet they were, yeah. And then we were in the crowd. Right, I've got a quiz for you, Chris. Go on. Name that team. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I've got it in front of me. I can give you a bit of a help if you need some. No, do, you on, the goalkeeper, do you remember who the goalkeeper was? Corrigan. No. Uh, Corrigan or, or, um, oh, bloody hell. Testing, you know, aren't you? Are you going to help me after this? Tony Buck. No, Tony Patton. Buck. Yes, yes. Mike Doyle. Yes. George Eslock. Yes. Alan Oakes. Yes. Summerby. Yes. K King Colin. Yeah, of course. Franny Lee. Yes. Nelly Young. Yes. Two more. Not Tony Coleman, was it? Yes, it was. You got that man out of Who's the goalkeeper? Oh, don't Young. tell me. Yeah. Harry Dowd. <laughs> no. Ken Malone. Gonna... Yes. <laughs> hey, I tell you what, you did better there than I thought you would. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> to be honest, Tom, Harry that Dowd. is the 1969 no. Cup final Ken team. Gonna... But yes. it was Dowd, <laughs> Book, uh, Pardo, Doyle, Eslop, Oaks, Summerby, Bell, Lee. Young and Tony Coleman. Oh, right, I'll give you 50 quid to name the Spurs lineup. Right, in goals <laughs> by Jenny. <laughs> no! <laughs> Is it? Yes. Right. Yeah, Pat Jennings 
Um, uh, I don't oh, God, what if I said no? Oh, God. Frightened you then, didn't I? Yeah, you did a little bit then, pal. Crank, I thought you were just going to whittle it. I remember you talking, I remember you and me, me and my dad talking about, you know, you used to, you used to rittle, rattle the city team off with Nana just playing football or cricket in the yeah, garden. You used yeah, to be able to yeah. bang it off yeah. left, right and centre. It's pretty amazing, that. It's, it's going to be a massive loss. Um, yes, very sad. For City, and he did what I've not realised. I knew he was an ambassador at City. You know when they do the walk rounds before the games, yeah. you know the wine and the dine and stuff. Like that. He did so much of that, and he seems like such a genuinely, genuinely yeah. nice bloke. Well, do you remember we dragged him over for your dad to talk to? I remember very well. <laughs> yeah. We had the balloons on the table. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that you made your dad's day. That that did. Who else uh, is there? Tommy, Tommy Booth. Come and have a Tommy chat. Booth, big Tommy played golf with Tommy. Yeah, um, Tommy Booth, uh, uh, Tony Buck was yes. there. Mike Summerby, I think, was there, wasn't he? Mike Summerby was always doing the rounds. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a couple yeah. of newer ones as well. I can't remember who they were, but the they, yeah. they, they look, they look, City seem to look after old players. Yeah, which is I mean, nice thing, to see. Um, you don't, unless you were somebody special, you don't get a stand named after you. I mean, that that for his family must be wonderful. Yeah. To see the Colin Bell stand, that massive stand in front of us, you've got to be a something in folklore at Manchester City, you know. Fantastic player. The high was playing for Manchester City and being successful. Uh, the low of my career was uh, was the injury. When I look at my career notes, uh, I probably played two thirds of my career, and I played nearly five hundred times for City, uh, nearly fifty times for England. I probably could have doubled the the caps for England, and I, whether we would have won anything else in another five years playing for City, uh, FA Cup or League, I just don't know. But. Uh, it, it it went it went missing, and I could have played for another five years at top level. Other games or trophies, perhaps that stand out in your mind. Uh, f there's a game at Newcastle that stands out when we won the league uh, to beat United. They finished second, and we were top. That would, it wouldn't naturally that was very special after so many games to be top of the top of the league, uh, and probably the down. Well, not a down a game, but. A game that meant a lot to me is when I came back against Newcastle again after my injury and the the support I got and the the welcome I got back on at half time that particular game because I've had this connection with the supporters uh, and when I came on that particular game that's probably my number one game in my my life come back from injury the reception I got and what I meant to the supporters and the the connection between myself and the supporters uh, I don't think it's the same with any other player or any other club. It's very, very special and still is now. And the best thing for me in my life was signed for Manchester City.